Hello and welcome to the Hospital Rooms Digital Art School. You're about to watch a Flags of Us workshop with artist Darren John. All the materials that you'll need for the workshop are listed below and don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our channel. Enjoy the workshop. Hello and welcome to today's Digital Art School workshop. My name is Darren John and today we're going to be looking at process, texture and the imagination. I'm a painter, I love painting. There's nothing better than moving various coloured liquids around on a surface to make images. But what I like most about making pictures is finding new ways and new tools to make them. So instead of using a brush the way we might expect to use a brush, what if we use two brushes stuck together? What if? We put the brush on the end of a stick. What might that look like? Hey, what if we put the brush into a drill? These are the things that make me really excited to repurpose and reapproach our surroundings to make art. It's great for art making, but it's also a really fun way to view our surroundings, more playfully, more energetically. As children, we make music without knowing instruments, we dance without knowing the moves, and we draw and we paint with enthusiasm because it feels great. So we should keep doing it, right? So today's workshop is called Flags of Us, and we're gonna be making our own flags. We can fly our very own flags for creativity. I think it's gonna be really fun, and the more tools you have to work with, the better. But I'll list out some of the tools that you will need to get us moving. So, a glue stick will be very helpful for piecing these puzzle pieces together to make our flags. Hopefully you have some brushes. Some pens may also be useful along the way. Uh, if you have pencils or coloured pencils, those will also be very helpful. And of course, if you have some paint, well, if you don't have that, we're going to be in trouble. If you've already downloaded the resource pack, you probably have a better idea of what we'll be up to today. But for those who've not done that, I'm going to spin through it very quickly for you. We'll start with some of our basic tools, making some textures and some patterns. Once those have dried, and we've made enough that we're happy with, we'll start to compile them together and glue them into one main final sheet so that we have our flags. Another thing that I really like about making paintings this way is sharing them, and you can share yours too. We're all really looking forward to seeing your creations at the end of this, and you can share them using the hashtag attached to this video, wherever you're watching it. Now in the resource pack, we've got a few grid examples and some samples that you can follow for making your artworks. You don't need to follow these, but if you find it makes it easier, absolutely go for it. I'm gonna aim for a five, uh, a five spaced grid. So I'm gonna need five sheets. And of course I have prepared some earlier, but I'd just like to show you a quick way if you don't have scissors that you can make some. So if you prepare some of your paper in front of you, you don't necessarily need scissors to, or a scalpel to cut these. You can fold, you can tear, you can rip, and you'll already start to realize that approaching this way of thinking in your art practice, but also in life, is very rewarding and very powerful. It's a great skill to be able to problem solve on the fly. And asking what if, I think, is a really, really good thing to do for these workshops. So we can fold, we can score, and we can tear. And what you might find is, instead of having that crisp, sharp edge, we're going to end up with a really nice tear that I think will follow the line but will give us quite a nice result. So I'm going to start with this one here. This is going to be probably the top portion and then I'll have four or three at the base. So let's get started with some paint. I'm going to pour some of this out onto this sheet here. I find it's quite useful to, to have paint on a separate item because then you can just move it out of the way if you need to control the chaos. So I'm going to spread this out just a little bit here. Now with a brush, I'm going to dip that into a little bit of water. Just brush that water off. And we're going to start with a very, very simple technique of dipping the brush into some paint. And we're going to make some repeated patterns across the sheet. I'm going to start top left and just slightly press and we're almost making sort of hyphened dashes across. So put that to a side because we're going to need that to dry and we'll start with a different sheet. 
what we're going to do next. I mean, this is the big question, and this is what makes things quite fun. What next? So we've got something that's fairly densely populated with brushwork. Um, what about using some pens or pencils together? So instead of having one pencil like this that will produce us perhaps one line or one shape, what if we had a couple stuck together? I did mention that about the brushes, but I think I've got a couple here somewhere that I think will work really well. So here I've, I've taped two pencils together. You don't necessarily need to tape them together, but it might make it a little easier. If not, you can still hold them together in your hand. I'm going to flip this one over because we don't need that for now. And I'm going to start up the top left and I'm just going to find my way with whatever feels good with the pencil. You'll see that it gives us the second line, which is really fun. And what I like about this is you just keep it, keep the pencil moving. It's not really about what it, what it resembles or what it looks like. It's it's the freedom of the flow that, that you can find with art making that I think is so valuable. And I want you to keep the pencils moving and don't stop until you get bored or it stops becoming fun. And I'm going to give that a border at the end, why not? Okay. Now it's not the best thing I've ever made, but I did enjoy making it. And I think that's an important thing to remember. So this one doesn't need drying, but I still will put it aside because we're going to move on to our next sheet. Now, hopefully, you've got some coloured paper or you've got some black paper. I think this will add a quite a nice dynamic to the end flag that we hope to make because it will give us an immediate contrast. It's sort of cheating, but it's also not cheating. It's whatever works, right? So I'm going to need some white paint in the mix here. So I do have some ink that's white, and I'm going to put that into a tub so that I'm not making a mess of my workspace. Let's get that in there, okay. If you don't have too many tools, that's not a problem. If you have some paper, we can use some of the paper. Here's that torn sheet that I have from earlier, and I'm going to tear again just so I can basically make myself a new tool. And I think this is quite fun, and I hope that you'll find it too. So the edging that you can see along here is not straight, obviously. But that's going to give us quite an interesting textural mark when we use that on the paper. So with this torn sheet, I'd like to dip that into whatever coloured paint you've chosen to use. And we want to get the edges nice and painty so that we can give ourselves a stroked type textural mark. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be textural, but I think it's going to be nice. It might not work first go, but I think it's important to just commit to taking the full action from start to finish, because you'll never know until the end. And if it doesn't work out the way you hoped, that's fine. We can just go again, or not at all. So let's get that edging nice and painty. OK. And let's see what we get. I'm going to flip that over and go back. Okay, that looks pretty cool, pretty cool. It's almost two mountain sides facing one another, if you like. If not, that's fine too. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to put that to the side. I'm not going to need that for now. And we're going to move on to another sheet. So I'm going to take some one of these pens. If you don't have a pen, you can still achieve this with some pencils or some crayons or whatever it is you have to hand. Now, if you'd like, you can fill these in, give them a colour in on each of the, the shapes. You could do that with the black or you could do that with the colour, with whatever works. I'm going to fill this in with black because I think this monochrome flag that I'm making is going to work really, really well for this. So I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to fill these shapes in. Okay, that's looking good. We're going to put that to the side to dry and we're going to do a few more while we wait for those to dry. Take another one out. We're ready. So 
I've got this wonderful striped roller that, that I have actually made myself. You can get some really fantastic rollers that have uh, textures already on. They're typically used for sort of homemade wallpapers, but this one's quite nice because it's just a, a very standard foam roller that I've cut into to quite crude line shapes. And we're going to roll that into our, into our paint that we've already prepared. And if you want, you can get it fully caked. If not, that's fine too, because I think that textural part is, is quite nice. And what I'd like for you all to try to do is to fully commit to having these stripes or whatever the texture is fully covered across your sheet. So I'm going to prepare already and put a coloured sheet of paper out just as a, as a buffer to protect my surface. There we go, nice and green. And I want you to go from left to right or top to bottom, whatever works best, and keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving until you reach the end. Now we get to go again because we want to complete this full sheet. So try and hold that down anywhere that there is space for your finger to hold. And keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. And I, I, I don't know about you, I love these, the, the approaches to this is just amazing. In one time, one stroke, one movement is ready to go. It was like, what, 20 seconds? That's the way it should be. Right, put that to the side and we'll leave that to dry. Okay, another tool from the home. Um, or the garden maybe, or the garage, or the shed, or wherever. Um, basketballs are really, really interesting to me because that lovely surface texture is all dotted and, and wonderful. And I know because I've already used it that it makes really interesting marks. And I'd really like to share those with you because I think if you approach your surroundings with this what if and I wonder what that looks like kind of energy, you might find some similar things that look great too. So I'm going to get another sheet to protect the surface of my work surface. And again, we really want to try to keep the ball moving. We want to try to cover the whole space. So I'm going to give that a nice coating. And I realized I'm not wearing gloves, so I'm going to put some on because this is going to get quite messy in a fun way, but still, preparation is key. So let me get this on really quick. If you've not got gloves, that's OK. It just means you're going to need to wash your hands quite quickly. Right. Here we go, so it's looking like it's going to do something. So, okay, in one swift go, and it's important to keep it moving because as soon as you start to hesitate, that's when things start to become about what they look like rather than what they feel like. And I think that might be the best one I've ever done. You still got some lovely shapes of the basketball texture, and I really love these sort of harsher black spaces. That's worked out really well, okay. Again, put that to the side, and I think we've probably nearly got enough to start compiling one of our flex. Okay, last one for today. What should we use? What should we go for? I've actually got, this one might be quite easy for everyone. I have some bubble wrap, which you might normally think is just to protect things, but it's also going to give us a similar to the basketball, really, really nice uh, textural uh, quality to it. So I'm just going to cut some of these off just so I can save some for later. You can tear them if you like, but it's sometimes a little tricky. Or if you've got scissors, you can use those too. I think there's enough black paint on here for me to continue using. And if not, then I kind of feel like a dry sort of uh, print will probably work quite nicely too. So I'm just going to spread out what's left on this sheet and print this on. If you have a spare roller at home or wherever you're working, you can also use those, which is quite handy. Um, roll that into the paint and then onto the surface. You can get quite interesting prints from those. You might find with whatever tools you're, you do have to play with, the extra options that are suggested in the resource pack, that that might work better for you. So I'm just going to plunk this on this top section and give that a press. You can already sort of see what it looks like because it's clear, which is quite helpful. We'll pop these to the side and wait for those to dry, and then we'll start to compile the flags. And this is quite a fun element to this project because you're going to start to think about how these different textures and patterns and experiences relate to one another. Okay, now we've left some of our pieces to dry for a little while. You may need longer, you may not. Um, so now's the good bit. Now's the time to start compiling those shapes together. So if you have a final sheet, this is going to work very well, um, and start to puzzle around the various textures and patterns that we've created. 
we want to see how they fit together nicely and how they kind of speak to one another on the page. Uh, you can see mine are a little wet still, but that's fun. That's part of it, right? Maybe it will make some new textures for us. There'll be some free ones. And I have this one here. So I've got a few ones here that I really like, uh, and I'm going to select those to sort of compile my final composition, my final flag of the day. It's almost a recording of, of today's action, today's process. It's quite a, a meditative approach if you think of things like that, rather than trying to create a masterpiece that perhaps you think needs to sell or belong to someone. This is a recording of your own meditation, and that's a nice way to think of these things. So I think I've probably got space for three in total here. So I'm going to definitely choose this one because I really like how this reacts with this one. It's kind of a linear approach. I think it's quite nice. But I think also this is quite nice. We've got another angular approach that mirrors this, but with a black backing. And I think because I've got four others remaining, I'm going to make a second one too. So with your glue sticks, you can get these stuck down. It's got a nice little overlap actually that where the paper has been distorted by the wet paint, it's giving us these really cool shadows sort of un underneath, which I really like. And there you have it. This is the first flag of mine. Uh, I'm going to continue and make the second because I think we might still have some time left to share that with you. But in the meantime, I'll share with you on the main screen this one here. So that's the first one. We can crop the edges. We can do whatever we like with it. Give it to a friend, a lover, a family member, anyone you like, or you can keep it yourself. I'm going to put that to the side to dry and prepare for my final flag, which I might even use a colored base for. Why not? These two have sort of a similar kind of approach going on. It's almost as if if you were to zoom in heavily on this, you might see this. I quite like that. I like that when I see this, if you were then to zoom into this, that might be what that looks like. Who knows? I mean, I like the way this looks. I might rotate this another time. So I'll point that into the corner. That looks quite nice to me. I quite like the way that sits. So with the glue sticks ready again, we're going to start to paste these down. Okay, there we go. Thank you so much again for joining us today. I we'll hope you've had as much fun as we've had. Uh, we'd love to see your creations, so be sure to hashtag and share those on whichever social platforms you're using. Um, the hashtag should be included in the description wherever you are finding this video. From all of us here, thank you so much, and be sure to view your world as playfully as you can. <laughs>